Hi, I'm Brad Neal with the University of Indianapolis, and let's talk a little bit about a more advanced model of the atom. So we've talked previously that we had the Bohr model of the atom, and that worked very well with the one electron systems, uh, and we gave you the example of hydrogen. We also noted that there's not a lot of one electron systems out there besides hydrogen. So we need to have a more advanced model for what's actually happening with respect to electrons and atoms in general. Before we can do that, we need to go through a few things uh, regarding waves. Um, because this is going to be where we blend the information from the Schrodinger, or I'm sorry, from um, our de Broglie uh, wavelength of particles and this idea of atoms. So what we've got up on the screen right now are some things to think about with respect to standing waves. Now a standing wave is a wave that is just continuing to oscillate back and forth, back and forth. If we think about a wave uh, and we've got it um, here on the screen, uh, one side we can say this is where the wave is attached and then on the other side this is where, I'm sorry, a string is attached and this is where a string is attached and this distance would be the length of our string. If we pluck a string, it's going to vibrate and it's going to form a wave. Uh, if you play guitar, it's the same idea there. You pluck a string and the string oscillates. And with guitar, it creates a sound. Um, we're not going to be focusing on sound waves here. We're going to be specifically just talking about the properties of waves. Anywhere where we have a dot, um, or a place where the wave is not really moving, we're going to call this a node. So if we have a string where we've, we're going to call it n equals 1, uh, we're going to have the wave going out in the purple and the wave coming back. And it's going to go from the starting position and, and not end here at this side, um, this is only going to represent half of a wave if we go back to those definitions of waves from the beginning of the chapter. So this going up is half a wave, going back is the completed wave. The point here and at the point over here where we don't have uh, any kind of movement of our string, we could call this a node. Um, at a node, there is no lateral movement, so the string isn't going to move. If we go to something that's a little bit bigger, here with n equals 2, now if we follow the purple, we go up, down, and we hit this point, and we go on over to our end point, and then we come back via the green, and we cross here at this intersection again where we were with the purple, but we notice that there's no movement of our string here. This point in time where there's no movement, we're calling this a node. Then we go back and we finish our wave, two waves, two complete waves, here at the point where we started our journey. If we go to three waves, n equals three, we now go up, down, up, and we've completed one wave cycle. But we completed it, you might say, well, like halfway, kind of, sort of. Keep going, we've got one up, one down, and now we've completed two waves. And if you'll notice, we're here at another node. So we have one goes up, and goes down and completed wave, up, going back, completed wave, up, down, up, completed wave. We've completed three waves. And now we have two nodes. So a wave here is always going to be a whole number of half wavelengths, AKA we're always going to have a whole number here for the number of waves. So one, two, three, we can't have 3.5. It's not gonna work. So based off of the problem that we discussed in our de Broglie video, um, we said that electrons have wave-like properties that are fairly significant. Let's now kick that back to the simulation that we used when we talked about the Bohr model to discuss this a little bit more. So here's our simulation. Um, and we've got this set right now such that we're looking at the Bohr model again. And we discussed what these energy levels were, um, but we also discussed that this system doesn't really work for multi-electron systems. So what if we applied de Broglie's wave-like properties of an electron to where an electron is with respect to the nucleus? Okay, 
And so now we have a new picture. Instead of thinking about the electron as a single particle, we're thinking about it as a wave. And now, if we still go ahead and we think that we have these specific areas where the wave can exist, we have a situation where, oh, there's a big one. Now the electron is just traveling so quickly that its wave-like properties are so important. We still have energy levels, so it still nicely matches the experimental data that we get, but now we're thinking, hey, these electrons, it's not an individual particle. Uh, in fact, one of the big pitfalls that often comes from general chemistry is that students try to think of an electron as that ball and as it's moving through space. It's actually way more complicated than that. One thing that might help us here is if we go to this 3D view. So now we can see the string as it is vibrating in space, the electron as it is vibrating in this wave-like property as we're going along. And you'll see that this wave is continuous. We are having a situation here where the electron uh, is completing full waves. And we can say now n equals one is gonna be one wave. n equals two would be two waves. n equals three, three waves, so on, so on, so forth, and so forth. Oh, there we go, there's a nice big one. So the de Broglie idea here is now going to, or the de Broglie model of the atom is going to try to bridge the gap between this wave, uh, the wave-like properties of the electron with what the Bohr model has shown to work. However, this model is also not going to quite hold up well enough when we come into a multi-electron system. So it's not that this model is completely wrong and it's completely bad. It still nicely uh, meets up with what experiment shows, uh, but and it does a nicer job of acknowledging the wave-like properties of the electron, it still doesn't have that electron-electron repulsion component though. So this is where, uh, and I'm going to leave it to you in your book to just very lightly read over uh, the idea of the Schrodinger equation. And it gets pretty uh, in-depth pretty quickly, and we're not going to be focusing in a ton on the wave function and the Hamiltonian and things of that nature. We're going to focus just on the ramifications of what come from those. Um, and we're going to talk about those, uh, specifically the quantum numbers, the ramification of the quantum numbers in a different video. But this is kind of our nice little, we're putting it together now. Uh, we've made one more step towards a better holistic model of what's really going on uh, with respect to electrons and atoms. Uh, and we're almost ready for, uh, air quotes, the truth on what's really happening. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I hope that you found this useful. Thanks.